Hey guys, this is Rob. Welcome to the next episode in this residential Revit electrical series. In this one, we're going to look at circuiting these lights that we've put in on previous episodes. We'll look at how to deal with the adjusting the floor plan brightness in the background. We will look at adjusting some heights of some of these lights that are on different floor levels. And then we'll look at actually circuiting these up, putting home runs to the panel, looking at the watts that are on the circuit. We will look at how to adjust all these little arcs that connect circuits and even the switches and show how to adjust those and fine tune those to make a nicely presented circuiting plan. So stay tuned for another packed episode. Here we are back in our Revit Electrical Residential Series project that we've been working on. And we are on the first floor lighting plan today. We're going to continue with lighting plan by circuiting up all of these lights that we've already installed in previous episodes. If you need to review that, go ahead and go back and check those out. We have a variety of lights in here and they're installed and they are tagged with the smart tags. So we want to circuit them. Before I do that, I wanted to bring up a couple housekeeping items. One thing I like to do with my architectural floor plan background is help it to kind of be more faded in the plan. We did that in the power plan, but let's do that here. So remember we're using a lighting view template. So any visibility graphics changes we make need to be in this template. So we click on the template and we go down to the VG overrides, visibility graphics override for the Revit links, hit edit there. And here we can see our architectural Revit link that we have and we can set it to half tone, which as you will see here, kind of graze it down. Now, if the half tone doesn't seem low enough, we can go into some options to modify that. If you go to manage and then hit additional settings, you will see a number of settings in here. And this one's called half tone underlay. There's a slider so we can modify this half tone. So if we put it down to like 13%, you will see that it nearly disappears. So this is a way you can deal with the half tone. And a lot of it has to do with your screen and then eventually when you print to PDF or if you even print to paper, it may have different appearances. So you'll want to get this dialed in for what works for you. We will try 60 right now and that seems good for at least for this screen. It kind of disappears and lets our electrical items like lighting and receptacles pop out. The other thing I would like to do for some cleanup is that underlay issue. Like right here, you can see that the light fixture here is obscured by the graphics of the sink. Let's go back to our lighting template. And this is good practice to get in and out of here because this is something you will do quite often. It's good practice to get in here. Hit this underlay and say OK. And let's see what happens to the graphics. Now you can see that our light graphics ends up being placed on top of the graphics for the sink. And this is independent of the dashed status now. So it really helps your electrical items pop out, I think, from the background. So that's a little housekeeping I wanted to do on visual. The other thing I wanted to deal with that I didn't deal with back when I put these lights in is recall that this is a sunken living room. This whole living room and this balcony is, is below the level of level one. Now the lights were okay because they're attached to the ceiling. So they just attach to the ceiling. However, these wall mount fixtures we installed over here as six feet above level one. Well, that makes them even a couple feet higher than the sunken level, living room level. Let's take a look at a section, and I need to make sure my section is far enough over with this slider to get this light in there. Now, I've already fixed the switch, and what I mean is look at the switch. I've already told it to be level one living room and four feet above that. So I need to do the same thing to this light. So let's look at that section. And notice it's way up here. Level one is right here. And let me pull these out so we can read these a little better because they're overlapped with the architectural levels. Level one is at zero and level one living room is down one foot nine. So our switch was way up here before I lowered it. Now the light needs to be lowered. So, so click on the light. We're going to change its level from level one down to level one living room. Now that didn't move the light, did it? But what it did do is it re-dimensioned it from our new surface. 
So that light is now seven foot nine above the living room, and this is where we want to make this six feet. So it doesn't move the light, it just changed its relative height and what it is relative to. So now this pulls it down, so now we're six feet above this living room floor, which is the same as this deck out here. So we want to do the same over here. Move it down to the level one living room and get it down to six feet. And I believe I already did that with my switch. I finished putting switches in. Yep, it's four feet. So we're good there. We finished putting switches in off camera. But we showed how to do that up on the second level. And now we are going to start circuiting. Now, I also want to mention that this is a house, as we know. But in residential, you would many times, to save some money, lights will be circuited on the same circuit as receptacles that serve that room other than for example the kitchen because kitchen has special rules but other places like this hallway an electrician would typically connect these lights to the same circuit as the receptacles in this room so we could do that but like i said at the beginning of this project i want this to be more of a hybrid project where it's a house but i'm going to wire it like a commercial building so yes it would it would be more costly so it's not cost effective but i do want to show how it's done so that's how we're going to circuit this up when it comes to circuiting lights, we have to, of course, pay attention to how many watts are on these circuits. When we put the lights in, we set their wattage, or VA, based on an imaginary like cut sheet from our lighting designer. That's what we're going to base these loads on, is, is what we have here. And these are pretty typical loads for LED lights these days. I mean, this might even be only a 10-watt fixture versus a 15-watt fixture. But this is how we're going to go ahead and, and, and hook these up. We already have them set up at 120 volt. So the joy of Revit is it will tell us how many watts we have on a circuit as we go. We don't have to add anything up. So let us just start circuiting. We are going to circuit at least this kitchen and the outside lights. Start those on the circuit and we'll see how we end up. And let's recall that our panel is inside this laundry room. P1 is a recess panel load center in the laundry room. So we're going to circuit up to that. We only have one panel in this building, so that makes that easy. So we'll click on L1. Now we could select multiple fixtures holding the control key down, and that's one way to do it. My workflow is to get one circuited, and then you'll see the others are, are easier to circuit because sometimes you will find yourself in a busy area where you're clicking on the room tag instead of the light fixture, or you're hitting you know other things. So this is the reason I do it in this order. I will circuit one fixture, and you go to the power button to circuit, like we did on the receptacles, and then you can pick which panel, and you can either pick it by using a drop down. and again, we don't have many choices here in this small project, there's only one panel, but you can do a drop down, or you can hit the select panel button, and then physically touch the panel. And either way, that selects panel P1. So then it will show a dash line, which indicates your circuit boundary. So we've got this fixture and this panel all kind of in this area. It's a circuit. It turns it blue. Now it is ready for me to hit a wire button, which is actually a cable or conduit with multiple wires. We can hit that button to show the home run. But what I also like to do while I have this circuit selected, and you can see I have a circuit selected now, not a light fixture, is I like to give a load name. And this is the name, not a load type, but it would actually be the name on the panel that would say, you know, kitchen lighting. And I'm going to do it like we do with commercial loads. We will put lighting first, and then we go, or lights, and then we go kitchen. You can name it however you like, whatever works for you and your users. And I leave wiring till the end. So I've got that done. Now I can start adding other lights to this circuit easily by just saying edit circuit. Now it automatically defaults to add to circuit. I could jump over to remove from circuit if I want to start removing things, but I want to add things. So that's already picked. And now you will see that all the lights in here that are not on my circuit are grayed out. Hard to see at that zoom. But this one's dark because it's already on the circuit. But also now it won't let me select room tags. It won't let me select walls or any other things that might be in my way. It only allows me to pick lights and switches. So let me pick the rest of the lights easily. There. And I'm just, I don't even have to hold control down in this mode. 
I'm in light selection mode. So I've got those. And I want to add the, the switch that controls this area onto the same circuit so that I can show an arc. So click that. That's my switch controlling here and finish. I finished circuiting those lights. Now, how can I tell? Well, you can't really tell by looking at it yet. But if you click on a light and then over here in its instance parameters, down here under load, you can see it's panel P1, circuit number 18. Revit automatically assigns the next available circuit based upon the rules you have already set up for which order to circuit things. So I circuited on circuit 18. And let's go ahead and open our panel schedule to follow along with what it's doing. Down here on the left in our project browser, come down to panel schedules. And we already created panel one panel schedule back on the power plan. But double click that guy and open it. And you can see here we have our panel schedule. And we haven't gone through and fixed all these breakers yet. We haven't put any down to 15 amps yet. But we can fix that at the end. But here, right here, it's putting them in order down the right. We already went in order down the left. We're going in order down the right. Here's Light's Kitchen. It's our 20 amp circuit. And over here, there's 390 watts or VA on that circuit. So we've got plenty of room to add more lights. So let's go back to first floor and start adding rooms. Look at this hallway. And what I've set up for this one is I put a three way switch here. And I put a four-way switch down here to control these lights. Well, why a four-way? Well, that's because I'm also controlling up the stairway. There's a stairway up here. Look at the second floor. And you can't see it because this is a ceiling plan. In the floor plan, you can see the stairs. But there's a stairway that comes up here. And so I want these stairway lights and entry lights to also be controlled by those two switches below. So I actually have four switches controlling this area. So we'll keep that in mind when we circuit. So I'm going to leave those off of this circuit, but I do want to put in the rest of these circuits here. So how do I add to this circuit? I just need to hover over one of these lights that are already on a circuit. And if I hit tab once, it works. Sometimes it takes a couple tabs. And as you hit tab, you'll cycle through different things. And if you tab, then click. Now I've selected the circuit up here. You can see you're on electrical circuit and I have options to wire things now. But for now, we want to edit the circuit and add to this circuit. Again, add circuit is automatically up. So now we're back in that same add circuit we were before. We're not gonna do the hallway, but let's go do the mechanical room and its switch. Let's do the bathroom and its switch. Now we have a bath fan in here also, which we will need to connect, which we will get to in a minute. We have fans, many small fans to connect. This switch, this light, this light, and that's all I want to add to the circuit. Finish editing the circuit. So if we click on a light, again, we see that it's circuited, but we don't see the load of that circuit. We have to do the hover and tab and click to get into that circuit to now see its information. If we look at the circuit, we can see line by line some of the load information. Now. One thing that jumps out to me is that it's set up with a power factor 0.95. Now that is set somewhere in one of our lights, I would assume, and it doesn't really need to be. I mean, lighting drivers and such, if you really dig into it, are, are so close to a unity power factor that it shouldn't be an issue. So that doesn't really matter too much to us. But what all it does is it inflates our apparent load to be a little higher, which is okay too. So we have plenty of room on this circuit to add more if we want. Now while we're in this circuit, we can try to do some arcs now. Let's see what happens with arc wire. Hit arc. Now Revit takes its best shot at drawing spaghetti. Now of, of actually trying to draw arcs between things. It does a relatively good job. It depends on the, ge the geometry of your light fixtures and such. But as you can see, it's arcing all things together and it kind of picks the shortest distance between them. It's not maybe how an electrician would actually wire it. But again, remember our plans are diagrammatic. We are just trying to convey a design intent and show that all of these are circuited together. Some people don't even draw arcs on plans. They will just put circuit numbers beside each light. So you can do whichever way you do. But in my experience, I prefer arcs. They do lend some, some understanding to how things are circuited beyond just circuit numbers. So I'm gonna leave them in. But we do want to move some of these tags around to avoid the arcs. Now we can move tags, we can also adjust arcs. And I showed this on the power plan. 
But there's some controls on these wiring arcs that you can grab his grip here and move it around and kind of shape your arc. I can actually move it over to this side if I want. Now when I do this, I probably want to move where this arc attaches to my light. And you can see this little blue circle. And it's hard to see when you zoom in because of the lines. It go up to thin lines and click on this again. You'll see that little grip better. So that grip is actually shown where this wire wants to hit that light. So if you do click on it, it'll move over to it. But you can move this grip around. Move it to the middle if you want. I like to hit the edge, personally, as if it's diving towards the center. But pick the graphics that you like. And this is how I do it. And I'll go back, turn these off. If you need to do some kind of a, a fancier arc, you can add vertices to this. But for now, I'm just going to move things around and get this to look proper. So it takes a little drawing. It's still easier than actually going in and drawing arcs by hand, I believe. Now the light switches, it puts right to the middle of the switch, and I like that to be out at the end of the switch. Be as picky as you like. Now this one is not just a circle grip, thin lines. It's not just the circle. It's actually this square, which is the electrical connection point of this switch. If I was to pull it off of here, I have actually disconnected electrically the switch from the circuit, and we get this arrow like it's a home run. So I have to be careful about that. So we'll just leave that connected where it should. There, it's connected. Even though it's a little bit off of the switch, the connection point is down here rather than at the switch. It's an out-of-the-box switch from Revit. What can I say? So... We have the lights, we have this light connected, it has a lot of things tied to it. We are going to be using arcs from switches to show control. So that part does matter. Now Revit has a built-in switch system, and you can assign switches to lights, but it does not draw arc, it does not label the switches, it doesn't do anything, frankly except behind the scenes, it's connected. So I don't use that system. I just use arcs. But what it can do is I can force this to connect to a different fixture. For example, this switch leg from this switch to this light, it's not controlling that light, it's controlling this light. I can pull its grip clear over to another light. Now I have to adjust this also. But now I've shown that that switch controls this light because of its arc. Now, does that mess up the automatic draw arcs? Let's see what happens. Hover over this. Now, if I hover over once, you can see electrical network. That's a network, but not a system, a network of connected items that are connected to each other. Kind of like if you drew a box, all four lines are connected to each other. It's kind of a chain. That's all that's saying. It's a network. So if I click that, I'm not actually selecting a circuit. I've picked 26 pieces that are networked together in a chain. So I can move all of this stuff if I wanted to, which I don't want to do. And you can see that there's a number of errors that come up. But it's just showing that those are all connected together. I have to tab a number of times to get my circuit to light up. Now, when I'm so zoomed in, it's hard to see, but there's a blue line out here. That indicates that I've hit a circuit. You can also see as I hover, there's a little bit. Oh, I'm back. I got off of it and back on. So now it's back to network. So I need to tab. There's the network. Tab again. There's the circuit. Electrical circuits number 18. Then I can click it. So it takes a little finesse to get that figured out. I'm back in my circuit. And if I hit arc wire, it doesn't try to redraw this here. It knows there's already an arc connected to that switch, so it, it's leaving it alone. So this won't mess up your switching arcs. This switch actually controls this light. So now I'm pulling it over here somewhere. And I can put it near the same point. I want to adjust this arc. So again, take some fine tuning to get this done. You could. Instead, just manually install wires. For example, down here in the laundry room, let me delete that wire. Now I can go up to Systems and go to the Wire tool, Draws Arc Wire Runs, and just click on the Wire tool. Now 
I can hover over the actual electrical connection point, which is right there. There's actually a, a box and an X. Go from there, pick a center point, and then hit the other one. I have to hit the connection point. Now it's electrically connected with the wire or cable. And it does the same thing as doing the automatic wiring. So you can go by hand if you want to. And again, if you do that and try to hit wiring again, it won't redo what you have. If you take it off completely and then go back to the wiring tool, see the dash, it wants to connect those. So it keeps track. It's pretty smart. It keeps track of what is wired and what is not. Now, this big guy here with the arrow ends up being my home run, of course, which is means the run from the last fixture to the panel. And it points it towards the panel. In this case, it's putting it right on it. So we can move that to a place that may be better for, for uh, indicating the circuit. Now, you can see this arc is way off the map. Luckily, they give you this grip so you can tame, tame the arc. So let's do that. And speaking of home run, let's go ahead and tag this. Now we've already pre-set up our wiring to only show wires on the home run. You can have it set up to show wires everywhere if you want. I find that that gets tedious, so I, I leave it off. But go to tag and make sure your leader is off. And we're going to tag this actual home run. And it's set up like on the power plan just to show the circuit because we only have one panel. And commercially, I would have P1-18. I would have panel name dash circuit number. But in this case, with only one panel, we're just going to leave it simple. So let's see. Go through the rest of these, and you can tweak these arcs if you want. Again, I get kind of picky about this myself. That goes there. That's fine. And the rest looks good. All the tags are out of the way. So that is Lighting Circuiting 101. We're going to do the same to the rest of this house. Grab one fixture, hit the power button. P1 is the last panel I used, and it's the only panel I can use, so we're good there. Now I want to edit the circuit and add the rest of my lights. So I'm going to add this. Now these are all broken into individual four foot pieces. Now what happened here? Cannot add L2 to the circuit. The voltage for L2 is out of range. For the voltage 120 volt for the circuit okay you'll run into this now and then where your light fixture is set to a voltage well in this case to the wrong voltage and notice that on commercial buildings lights can be if you have a 480 volt system you also have a 277 volt to neutral system so lighting is often 277 volt in commercial in, you know, bigger commercial industrial buildings. We can't connect the wrong voltage fixture to this circuit. So we have to just X out of here and cancel editing the circuit. We need to fix this light. So let's edit L2 right here. L2 is our track. Edit and see what we have for voltage. Now we looked at this when we installed it and noticed that this is a manufacturer's family. And in hit, we notice that they have an electrical section that has some voltage and wattage and power factor and poles, and then they have an electrical loads, supply voltage and apparent load. So this begs the question, which one do we use? I have to say this is one reason I don't like using vendor families is because I find this kind of thing happens often that it gets confusing, and I like to boil things down to make it simple. So apparently this supply voltage is not really the right voltage. And is this even a number field? Yeah, it is a number field. It's not text. But it's not the voltage that the electrical connector inside this family is using. So it must be this voltage. Now, again, I would go in here and get rid of these extra voltages and loads that aren't correct. Because I don't even think the, the load is working. We need to put 120 here. And the wattage we've set at 400. Let's try that. We can save the project every chance you get. So let's try that again. Which fixture? This guy wasn't connected. This guy is the one that's connected. So we want to hover over it and then click it. So we're into our circuit now. Edit circuit. That light works. Let's see if that light works now. That fixed it. That was the voltage we needed to fix. 
Well, because we fixed L2, which is a type, all L2s follow along. That's the joy of having a type, not an instance. So now we can select all of these. Now, I was just going to say that, remember, these are 400 watts each. That's going to add up quickly. And this is what happens in Revit. It warns you, the total connected load for circuit 20 is exceeding 80% of the defined rating 20 amps. So Revit keeps track of that for you, which is handy. Uh, it's a good little warning. And so what's happening is these are high wattage fixtures. So we're going to have to do something different with circuiting. So let's cancel out of this again. So we have four of these at 400. That's 1600 watts. That eats up a circuit by itself. I mean, a 20 amp circuit at 120 volt is good for 2400 watts and 80% of that, is, which is about 1920. So 1600 would work. So in reality, we really need each of these rows of track to be on their own circuit. And we could pop some of these on. So my suggestion would be maybe go four of these and then that guy and that guy. And then we have to think about the switching. We're going to be switching each circuit independently too. And then same thing here. So let's do that and then we'll adjust their switching. So we already have this circuit. Tab, click, edit circuit. Let's add these four and that guy and see how we do. And it doesn't give you a running total or anything like that. You just have to finish editing and then hover over the circuit, click it, and then look. We're at 1609. We are good with that circuit. Now we can label it. I like to do that while I'm here. Lights, living room, apply that. And then I'll hit my arc wire and see what I get. So it drew my home run. I might stretch that out a little bit. And then I'll deal with my arc. And where you put the arc affects how these wires look, as you can see. The other thing I'll note on the wire, a little plus and minus, you can add additional hot wires to this if you need additional wires. Sometimes you need an additional hot because you run a switch leg and a non-switch leg to a fixture and things like that. If we're showing wiring between switches, three ways and four ways, we would add what they call the travelers, the extra wires that are between switches. So that's a plus and minus for that. Let's go ahead and label this home run, circuit 20, and just check the arcing. Doesn't do a smooth arc depending on how zoomed in you are. What's interesting is that the track, which is from a vendor, the connection point for this track is way down here. See, for this light fixture, the connection point's way down here past the light fixture. So, again, something strange in this built in fixture. So, I'm going to have to fix all of these. Again, I mentioned you can't pull this off of here, you get that problem. So what if I do want to change where that hits? If I zoom way in, I can find it. There we go. So that sometimes it's a little tricky to get to that grip. But now I have both ends of this fixture. So I can connect it to this light and this light and get that that way. So sometimes it is very much a challenge to find that little grip. Now you can see, zooming way in, I found it with thin lines on. So we're going to play around with this. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and speed this up. And then this guy, who knows what he's doing. We've got all sorts of things going on here. Wire's gone crazy here. But you want to find that circle grip. So something like that. And I'll do the same over here. We're going to wire this separately. Power to the next P1. Edit circuit. Add the rest of these. And you can see it's easy to pick these. I don't have to worry about the L2 in the way. L4, the tags. Finish editing. Hover again and pick it. You have to do a hover 
again to pick these. It doesn't stay picked, which is annoying. Lights. Living room also. And then also, once you start typing, you can just jump down and click on that and save yourself a type. And let's arc it. And I'll go through and do the same things I just did. I'll speed this up. And there we go. Now we need to get our switches adjusted. Now that we've had to go with two circuits, I mean, there's also, of course, a possibility you can use a, a two pole switch, which switches two circuits at once. But if you start doing that with three ways, it, it gets to be messy and expensive. So let me fix this arc, fix those wires. What I'm going to do is just put two sets of three way switches on here, get back out of thin lines. Right click, let's create similar down the wall and let's click this and hit copy. Recall that I don't use the built in labels in three way switches because it would be inside that wall somewhere right now. The three wouldn't, you couldn't see it. So I just use text. However, I do need these to be connected, but let's look at the other end. Now, I had put switches and I hadn't put them three way yet, but I put switches at each exit so if you're coming in from here you can turn lights on or if you're leaving you can turn them off i think doing it per row works i could put two three ways here for both and two three ways you know or four ways of course because if i do all of that but i'm just going to put a three way at each we'll say that will work for this situation as you know switching can be very much a personal preference So I just go with what I think makes sense at the moment, at least. So now we need to get these switches added to these circuits. So hover over here, connect it, edit circuit, pick that switch and that switch, finish, and then hover again and click. And now I get my dashes. Now it'll be interesting to see what happens when you get close to the home run. And you pick another fixture or another switch, it may decide to put the home run from the closer. It did not. Luckily, it chose the fixture to home run, not the switch. And we can always change that around. And again, in reality, they may run a home run to the switch first and then go up through the lights with all the extra travelers, or they may hit the switch first. They may run clear down to this switch with the travelers and such, and then take the switch leg from here back up to the lights. So, again, how they wire this is independent really of how we show our design intent of what's connected to what. These are not wiring diagrams. An electrician drawing this may end up drawing it like a wiring diagram, which is great too. This needs to be drawn to uh, suit whoever the user of these plans are. Tab, let's edit circuit, select our switch. And also this is nice, it doesn't try to pick a three. It lets us select the switch, finish it. Tab, tab, select, arc it. And we can move the three out of the way for this guy. That's why I like that being its own thing. We can move the home run. The 22 follows, but we can still move it. And then down here, I don't like the arc that tight. Reworks. So there. Now we also have these exterior lights, which we may want to tie to one of these circuits. Now we've already decided that those lights are going to have built-in photocells and they're far enough away where they're not going to affect each other in that regard. So we could add both of these just to one of these circuits. It would be the unswitched leg of a circuit, but we have enough room on, on one of these circuits to add it. So I'm going to go ahead and add them to this circuit. Tab, tab, go to edit circuit, pick these two lights. We didn't get any warnings that we have too many amps on this circuit. Finish editing, then we have to select it again, of course, to do the wiring tab once was enough. And then do our arc wire. And then we want to fix the arc wire. Now this, it wanted to connect to that switch, which we don't need. And then we can do this. And fix our arcs. 
And again, it went from here to here. We could go from here to here. Let's go ahead and put, do that. So sometimes I like to like make it a little more practical than what it's trying to indicate. And then here we have that same issue with the circle. Let's see if we can even find it way in here. Now they are so on top of each other. I'm zooming way in and I'm not seeing it. So, and it put me way over there for some reason. So that's going to be a tricky one. This is one where this may help to get this extended beyond. And then sometimes it'll put a circle out here for me. But I don't see it. Oh, there it is. I went clear over here and it decided that, oh, there's some other geometry you can attach to. Now it gave me the circle I was looking for. So you have to kind of outsmart the grip. We're good there. This one is going to take some outsmarting. Pull it here so that it draws it over in that little guy there. And now we can get to that arc and draw it the way we like. Again, a little finesse to make that work and move our three. So now let's go and see what we're going to do with the hall. We're going to make a circuit that spans two floors, two separate plans. So this is a good opportunity to show how to deal with that. So we can circuit these together first, and then we will go up and add the second floor items. So let's get this started. Pick one fixture, hit the power button on the P1, of course. Let's call this. So upstairs, this is going to be called the entry hall. So I'm just going to call this entry hall, even though it comes down here. Apply that, edit circuit, and add the rest of these lights to the circuit. And we want the switch, the three way switches, four way switches for this added to that circuit. I can finish adding like that. So there, now I want to make sure I add these also to upstairs. So how can I do that? I go up here, how can I add those to that circuit? I need to select the circuit first. Well, make sure you have both of these views on tabs so you can get to them. You don't want to have to click over here to get them open, although that works too, but it's easiest, I believe, if you have them both open. So you go first floor, hover over your circuit, select your circuit. If I go to second floor plan, I now, since circuiting is still selected, still open, I can edit the circuit now and finish adding my fixtures. So I've added these and my switches to that downstairs circuit, I'm done. And I'm gonna call entry hall, I'm gonna put the entry hall over here, rather this is kind of a hall just to the back bedrooms. So I'm going to now hover over this, click it, and let's select arc wire, see what it does. It gave me a home run on this level because it will do that per level. If I go downstairs and do click and do arc wire, it gives me a home run down here as well, which is way over here. So my way to deal with that is let's get this moved over where there's a little more room. And you can point home runs how you want. Some people like to point them to the panel. Some people just point them anywhere or all, all in the same direction. There's many schemes out there. I'll do that for that home run. But I also want to indicate that the circuit needs to continue upstairs. So what I will often do is manually draw my wire from the connection point and send it upstairs like that. And it'll do a home run because it's not connected. And I can just say, with a note, I can say up. And, and that just is kind of an indicator that this goes up, the circuit goes up to other lights. So now I go to my second floor plan. This home run can be a down. And I can move it over here. There's different ways to do this. So I'll put it over here and I'll just put a text on here and call it down. And that kind of points to each floor when you're looking at, at this floor, you can see that it, that goes down. So to know what circuit this is on, you would have to go to the first floor and look at that home run. Let's go ahead and get this arc 
Get all arced up here. And move the three around. Let's try to hit that. Okay, so looks like we're good there. So that's how you can do multi-floor circuiting. And I have a whole video I'll point to up above that deals with multi-floor circuiting. And it also deals with tagging the fixtures, or in that case, receptacles, for the circuit number that it's on, since you don't have a home run on each floor. Next, we're just going to circuit the rest of this floor, and I'm not going to do that here. I'll do this off camera because it's the same technique. The last thing I do want to show, though, and I can show on the first floor, is how to deal with all of these fans that are in the bathrooms. So let's go down to first floor, and we need to open a power plan because the fans are actually on the power plan. First floor power plan. So, for example, in this laundry room, we have a fan. And we want to connect that to the lighting circuit so, such that it is controlled with the lights. Now, also one thing I notice, I see all my switches on this power plan. I don't want that. So, I need to turn the switches off in this view template. So, go into power plan, view template. And let's go to, it's a model entity in our model. And down here, it ends up being, we don't want any lighting fixtures and lighting devices are what those switches are. Turn both of those off so I don't see them in my power plan. There we go. Now, it does beg the question, if you did want to show a switch on a power plan, let's say I put an independent switch to control this fan. How would I show a non-lighting switch on here? Well, that gets tricky because now I need a switch that is actually an electrical fixture. So you can either find one somewhere or most likely go in and have to edit one and edit the category that it is. So if that's of interest, you know, I can show a video on how to do that. But in this case, we're tying these to the lighting circuit. As you can see here, I already put some notes on this fan. It says to the lights. But I would actually like the load of this fan to be on that lighting circuit so that it is more accurate. So again, I need to go and, and I'm gonna close some of these other plans. What you can do is just go up here to hit close inactive views and then I can reopen my lighting plan. So I'm gonna to go to my lighting circuit here, tab till I get to the circuit. And then I'm going to jump over to the first floor power and say edit circuit. And I'm going to add this fan, as you can see it lets me highlight it. And hopefully, oh, good, it's set up for the right voltage. And there. So now that laundry fan is connected to that lighting circuit. And if I was to hover over it and do a arc, it will try to do a home run. And that's where I can label this note to lights. I'll do it here. I'll just copy this one, copy. And up here, instead of just this dumb arc, I can actually connect that to my circuit and get my home run. First floor plan, again, the bath is the same circuit, actually. Once I select the circuit, go to first floor, edit the circuit to add it, select the fan, and there. Now, what happens if, now look, it wants to connect these two together because they're on the same circuit. So I can simply pull that off and just use what it's put in there as a home run, again, for a, to the lights, and get that arc. So you kind of have to, again, play around with the system and uh, tweak it a bit to make it work. Now the furnace is its own circuit, so we're good there. And we have one bath fan, one laundry fan, we're good. And so you would do the same thing up on the second floor lighting, second floor power plan to get these fans connected to the lighting circuit. And one last thing I want to show you about the lights too is I hadn't mentioned before. These switches have a voltage associated with them as well. Now in this case, it happens to be an instance parameter over here, electrical switch voltage. A lot of these voltage and wattage parameters have been type parameters. So you'd have to go into edit type to fix it. Now, why would a switch be a instance parameter? Well, this is, again, the built-in out-of-the-box Revit switch, and they did it this way. 
I would say most likely because you can have switches, like I mentioned before, that are on a 277 volt circuit in commercial work. So this allows you to change each switch independently to be its own voltage. Now our custom switches that I've made for our firm, I have separate types that have the switch voltage in the type, so I don't have to change them all independently. I can just change that type, or you just use the type that's the right voltage. So different ways to do it, but in this case, these are all set up as instance parameters, and luckily they're all set up at 120 volt, which is what we need on this project. So that wraps up the lighting circuiting, and until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.